this topic of what's the future of work look like? Mm. Um, and COVID, as you mentioned, has clearly forced us mm. to do some rapid uh, experimentation. And it's also pushed us and shown us that there's many ways we can get work done that we probably didn't um, imagine before or were reluctant to really try. What do you think are some of the changes we've seen that will stick around? And how do you think about building company culture in mm. that future world? One of the problems is that I come from the older generation <laughs> that actually liked human interaction, <laughs> that actually <laughs> cherished it, that I thought cultures were built because of the human interaction. I thought decision making was way better when you bumped into people on the corridor and you could exchange ideas or pop your head into a conference room and say, hey, I'm thinking about this, what do you think? So I actually love that human interaction. At the same time, some flexibility to enable people to balance their home life with their work life is also important. Um, I think making a decision on the future of, the, of work and the workplace, just as we're coming out of COVID, is the wrong time to make a decision. I think we should try different experiments, different models of how best to structure the future of work how much flexibility to give, when do people have to come in, what do you lose, what do you gain? I think we have to try a few experiments and uh, then decide what's the best resting point for the future of work, for different work groups, for different types of work that are gonna get done. Keeping in mind one thing, the essential worker still has to come to work every day. Don't create two classes of citizens, whether people who are knowledge workers or in office jobs have infinite flexibility but that essential worker who doesn't get paid much has to get up in the morning and schlep to work. So I think we have to be very cognizant of not creating two classes of citizens.